Hey, so it's been a while, and that is primarily because I've been taking time to recover and take care of myself, which I'll explain shortly. But uh, as a recap video for last week, I was working with the Antelopes, a co-ed group, and went in very, very tired. The previous off shift, I was traveling nonstop and never had time to rest. As much as much fun as it was, um, I just did not have time to rest. And so going into the field, I was extremely tired, grumpy, not in the best of moods to deal with other people when you're trying to when you're there to try to help them. Uh, but thankfully, they were a very functional group and managed. We managed to get on to bed pretty early, so consistently made sure we were getting what equated to about a total of 10-ish hours of sleep, primarily because as HI, I never sleep correctly anymore. Like it got better as the week went on, um, but still if anyone needs to go to the bathroom, you gotta wake up and you gotta stay awake until they come back to make sure that they come back. And just, I think it's partially me, just the way my body is. It's, I'm finding it harder and harder to stay asleep the whole night, even if I'm getting better sleep throughout the night. Uh, the other thing is, again, just if anyone makes noise, you got to be ready to wake up and do whatever needs to get taken care of, just in case. But probably about the th second or third night, I had a couple of weird dreams. The first being that, like, the fourth front portion of the top of my head was just like going bald. Everything else was fine. And then I don't even know if it was the same night or the night after that, but I had a dream where one of my teeth chipped. And as I was pressing on it with another tooth, it like just cracked in half and fell out. And then after that, the rest of my teeth started like coming out of my mouth. And so I'm running to my dad for help like literally trying to hold my teeth in my mouth. It was horrible. And when I told my co-staff about it the next morning, she's like, oh yeah, that's a stress dream. And I'm like, it's news to me. I never heard about that. I've been under stress before and I've had more stressful weeks out in the shift, but I never had a dream where my teeth are falling out of my mouth. And mentioned it to someone else out in the field, one of the therapists, and they said, oh yeah, that's a stress dream. I'm like, great. Everyone else knows what's going on except me. And so when I mentioned, you know, this is my third shift as HI, I feel a lot more comfortable with what I'm doing now. They said, well, maybe you got some suppressed stress. So with that, with usually being on the go, I'll come out of the field and already have something planned that I need to get done and always on the go. This off was literally just take care of myself, give myself time to read, to watch TV, play some games, exercise again, just do the stuff that I find enjoyable and fun. So spent time hanging out with coworkers and a couple friends uh, that are here and taking everything at a much slower pace. So I got some, was productive throughout the week, got some stuff done that needed to get done, but realized that I have to start taking better care of myself because if I don't, then that will affect me going into the field because again, I'll be tired and stressed out and frustrated and that's the last thing that you need as HI when you're trying to help other people that are frustrated because they don't want to be there and it sucks not you know not being in your own bed and not getting to eat what you want and when you want and having a hike I mean it's not meant to be enjoyable although it can be so and then, you know, you're there to help them deal with their issues, whatever that may be, family issues, past drug problems, uh, 
sex addiction, addictions, uh, substance, you know, maybe it's not hardcore drugs, but some addiction to uh, over-the-counter medicine, I mean, or depression. So, not that, not that we have to be inhuman and be like, oh, everything is perfect and grand, but it doesn't help to go into the field with personal anxiety and stress that to a, to a level that may affect how we interact with the kids because we need to be consistent and fair and you know have have the patience to work with them even if we have to get in their face and tell them what's up and what they're doing wrong and how they can be doing better and through that be helping them but have the patience to help them so what what we do out of the field really does affect us in the field and vice versa. I mean, you have a you have a bad week, it's going to take you longer to de-stress from it. And normally. So, yeah, this is this job is not just a oh, let's go camping for a few days and everything will be grand. No, it's it's a part of your life. It you, you, it's not just, it's not like many other jobs where you just invest your intellectual aspect or your physical aspect. And if it's, if it's manual labor or, I mean, you can go to certain jobs and not really have to interact with people if you don't like them. Here you are living with your co-staff and you are living with these kids and that's your job is to invest yourself in them and hear them out give input uh, have if you can have fun with them make it a good week but I being on the go constantly has finally pretty much caught up with me and so while I still have projects in the future I want to be working on and taking care of and, and do trips, um, it has definitely reached a point for me where I need to be more mindful about what I'm doing to take care of myself and be able to maintain that appropriate balance. So hopefully from here on out, be able to do that a little bit better. Uh, we did do an exercise as a group that I've done with past students, but this time was a little bit more in depth where earth naming is a big deal. Um, it's an honor for anyone to get earth named and most students do. If I don't already have an article up on that, I intend to do that soon because I know it's, I haven't updated much other than vlogs for quite some time. So hopefully have some of that up, but the in short, the earth name is meant to reflect who you are as a person. And we did this exercise where I asked everyone in the group, if you could earth name yourself, what would it be and why? And so that gives them an opportunity to think about themselves in an honest and objective way. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? And then they share that with the group. And some had ideas of what they think would be a good earth name for them and others didn't and so we just had everyone list what are your attributes what, who are you as a person what do you see in yourself which is a great opportunity for me to then have stuff to to analyze how they perceive themselves and it was a lot of fun too because we came up with some some good names um someone was a meerkat um we had someone else who was a mountain goat, and someone else was a hyena. I mean, stuff that fit them, as we all kind of like, what about this? What about this? And I don't really see that in you. I see more of this. Um, so it was a lot of fun. I had, I had a good time doing it. But when it came, we did staff as well, and I listed off my attributes, and I don't have the paper with me to list them right now, but they thought about it and they were like, well, you're kind of like a lion. You're kind of like a bird. 
And so they went back and forth. Uh, parrots were kind of thrown out there, which I wasn't too excited about. For myself, I think something with a wolf would be really cool. As well as blue, because it's my favorite color and my birthstone. Um, and something of heavenly, celestial. Because I like to... I like philosophy. I like to try to figure out things about life. I like to ponder about life. Um, and so my co-staff said, a griffin, you are a griffin. And I was like, oh, that's badass. That's amazing. Um, Cause I like the, the mythic aspect to it. And so they said, celestial griffin. And I was thinking, man, if I would be so happy if that it was or becomes my Earth name. I'm not I'm just going to let it happen when it happens, uh, but it should be happening in the near-ish future, hopefully. So really excited for that. I thought that was a super cool name, one that I would very readily accept and wanted to mention that. For this coming week, it's going to be quite warm. Surprisingly, it's we were getting hot out in the field with our negative 30 degree sleeping bags last shift, and it's only supposed to get down to like the mid 30s this shift. So it's middle of February. Normally, there'd still be a crap ton of snow on the ground. I wanted it snowed last shift, by the way. Um, but it looks like it's going to be a super mild. Uh, week hopefully we'll get more hiking in <laughs> excuse me but this week has just been trying to get rested and prepared so that whatever happens this coming shift we'll be ready for it so not a whole lot planned or expecting to happen this coming shift actually other other than that I'm taking out Victor Frankel's man's search for meaning to read to the group and see how they respond to it. I love reading to groups. It's one of the, it's kind of a staple of my style. I've read the two Harry Potter books uh, so far and want to keep running with those, but have, uh, I've read a couple other books in the past and now I'm going to try hitting them with some philosophy and see how it goes. If they don't like it, it's okay. I'm not going to shove it down their throat, but I know for myself, as a high schooler, it, it was a very influential, in a positive light, very influential book on how to approach and appreciate life. So I'm curious to see what their response will be. But anyways, this has gone on long enough, and so I will hopefully see you all, see you all on the other side.